Hello, everybody. Today is April 3rd, 2023. And I've been sitting with the Lord this morning and answering people's questions that they have about walking in the spirit with the Lord. And um, I had answered in about a 10 minute answer. And he said, I believe this may actually be beneficial to others. So as you can see, it's a dreary and cold day in Michigan. So we're going to speak about some very warm and uplifting things today. And one of the things that was asked to me is, do you practice your gifts of the spirit, you know, essentially to hone them or get better at them? That was the generalized question that was given to me. And a short answer is yes, but I'm going to probably explain it differently than most people would explain it or that I've ever heard. And it is that I don't, I don't speak about gifts of the spirit like people do as if they're mine or they've been given to me. I speak of moving in the gifts of his spirit by becoming mature in the spirit. You see, because every gift is just an attribute of himself. Healing. He is the God who heals. That's an attribute of himself. Casting out demons. He is the light that dispels darkness. Do you see what I'm saying? Anything that we could ever walk in, in the spirit is because you become one with the spirit and you understand in whom you are made in the image of. But for me, it goes beyond knowing that I'm made in the image of that. You see, because you can be completely reprobate in new age and walk in what God made you to be as like himself. The difference between the literal difference between new age is that they don't have the truth and they're not under him. Between us and them, that's the only difference, essentially. They're walking, they're, they're climbing up uh, through another way, right? You, no one comes into the kingdom, but through the door, you have to go through Christ. Anyone found climbing up another way will be cast out, right? So that's what's sad about that, is that they're finding other doors and gates and ways into the spirit realm, but they're not walking in the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, and they're not under him. So for me, my entire life walk with him is is absolute reverence to his spirit and bowing to his authority in my life. Um, and, and it's not even that he's essentially requiring me, you know, like you must bow to me. He's, he's not like that at all. It's that most I look at him and because I love him and I listen to him, most do not bow to him. Most just approach him and talk at him and state this, that, or the other, or don't come to him at all. And so the one thing that he lost in the garden was connection to us and our reverence. So the one thing I want to make sure I do when I'm coming full circle back around is that I reverence him in any, every way that I can. Do I know that I have giftings that he's given me since he created? Absolutely. But I also know that I'm made in his image and I can walk in any of those giftings completely devoid of him and his leadership and honoring him. It's why many will say, Lord, Lord, in that day, and they'll be cast away. And he'll say, I never knew you. You walked in gifting, sure. You you used my name and my authority, sure. But you and I never had a relationship. That's how you can know scripture. You can know the word of truth. You can recite it. You can speak it out in this realm. You can move mountains by his, by his name. And you can walk in the gifts that he created you with that are really attributes of himself. And you can still be cast away in the end. So for me, I'm going to be reverent. And everything I do is by his leadership. It, 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 as Yeshua said, as Jesus the Christ said, uh, I only do what my father shows me, right? Tells or shows, that's it. Which which is because he he could have walked out as a son of man and walked in giftings, anointings, power, and authority by using God's name being made in his image and not be under him. And that would have been being a self God. And so the one thing he did was be reverent at all times to God, bowing down to God's authority, the father, having a father figure, an authority figure over him. So that is what I'm, I make sure that my person is doing. So when I say that I practice 
the gifts that he gave me. Yes, but I never address them as gifts that he gave me. You see, he is the gift and I will forever see him as the gift. And so essentially doing life with him is a gift. He said to me before, it's like the fivefold ministry. Many will talk about that. Many will, will desire titles and leadership roles and governing roles. But he said, the truth is when you walk in sonship, which is what Yeshua did, bowing to the Father in every single way. I don't want an opinion of my own. You tell me what my opinion is. I don't want a will of my own. You tell me what that is, Father. I do not want to work from my soul. You show me what your will is from your, your good pleasure and your agenda, right? He walked out sonship. He was a son. So every son that is in Christ will walk as Christ did and does as a son. All authority will be given to the Father, and in that the Father imbued upon him authority. Do you see the correlation? So there's a reverence there. So when he speaks to me about fi- the fivefold, what we call the fivefold ministry, right? Um, pastors, evangelists, prophets, apostles, teachers, and there's so much more. There's scribes, you know, there's artists, there's musicians, there's so many different offices that you can walk in, right? Offices just means positions. Okay. All of those are found in Christ. You'll never find anything that you can walk in in the kingdom that is not in Christ. Because Christ is in the Father and the Father is in Christ. So everything is Christ. Everything is God. Everything is the kingdom in those two, in Father and in Son, and in and by their spirit, right? So he said, when you walk in true sonship, you'll be walking as a mature one. And that's the difference. And when you walk as a mature one, you should be able to tap into anything that Christ ever walked in or has. So that's giftings or offices or positions or authority or etc. and so on. If you're under him and you're in sonship becoming mature, you should be able to tap into some. It doesn't mean like I can be like the greatest musician ever. I'm not saying that, but I should be able to sing something. I should be able to hone that with him with some practice, right? as an example, because that's what I've done. I have, if you, if you hear me because of the things that I've gone through in my life physically, I have a very nasally voice, like sinusy, nasally. And I used to be a very, very flat singer. Okay. But I loved singing. It's, it's like, I need to sing like I need to breathe (laughs) and I need to pray in tongues like I need to breathe. And so the Lord has been working on both of those with me. So Is that practicing your gifts? Yes, but they're not my gifts. They're attributes of his person. And in him, I ought to be able to do that because I'm in him and he's in me. So I should be able to walk in. And not only that, he made me in his image. I should be able to, if I'm becoming a mature one in him, walk in whatever he wants me to walk in at any time, which is why he said again right now, that's why I made you an apostle though. I made you a Swiss army knife because you're any tool that I need to use at any time. The point is here, here's the point. Maybe not everyone is, right? He gave some to be prophets, some to be apostles, some to, right? Maybe not everyone's an apostle, but in that he is, he is. So you should be able to tap into building foundations a little bit, right? With that, he's prophet. You should be able to tap into prophecy a little bit with that. Why? Because he's in you and you're in him, right? So when I talk about walking in gifts of the spirit, it's his spirit, number one. It's not gifts of my spirit, it's his spirit. And my spirit and his spirit are becoming one, right? So I have access to that. So yes, in in a sense, it's like riding a bike. He said to me, you want to sing? Don't just ask me for the gift of singing or the talent, okay, right? It's go do something and practice it because you have the ability if you will believe, right? And I believe that in Christ, I have all things. I literally believe that. So as I step into all these different areas, we walk in them. And if that's what you call practicing, I mean, yes, but I call it getting mature. So if you want to become a a decent singer, you get mature as a singer, which means you've put your time in and you've put your effort in and you've practiced that, right? You've worked out your salvation. Your salvation is him. It's the saving of your soul. So if I'm going to walk in my salvation, walking in him, then he's going to want to raise me up, right? He's going to want to raise up a child. That's maturity. So as I began to speak about these things, I said, for for instance, um, ways in which I walk in the spirit. And again, I don't want you to look at the ways in which I walk and compare it to your life. I want you to look at the ways in which I walk with him as 
as sparks within you of what is available. And then there's so much more that other people do that is different than me. Meaning it's a starting point for you to start discussing these things with the Lord or step in and start practicing these things with the Lord. But I will preface it with maturity is is a requirement for walking in the spirit. I'm not talking full maturity, but I'm talking you want to be mature and you want to be under him in reverence and you want to learn from him and you don't and you will not be afraid and you'll be brave and you'll be excited and you'll venture out. And that you believe that your imaging room, your imagination is exactly where he designed all of us and conceived us from, okay? you ha- If you cannot be, be a believer, it's going to be really hard for you to do any of this, right? So I fundamentally had to believe everything. I fundamentally went into scripture and said, at one point in my life, I said, okay, if it's in there, I believe it. I'm going to take it at face value, which means it means you don't debate it. It means if it says it, that's the truth. And so that's what I live with him is that if it says it, that's the truth, we're doing it. And so praying in tongues, same thing. I came from being a fundamental, independent fundamental Baptist, which means nobody tells us what to do. We're not part of an organization and we're very, very fundamental, except what I realized is they're very, very religious and they're very, very um, not fundamental. <laughs> they might have a desire to, they have a, they have a heart to want to be. Um, but what I found is scripture would say this, this, and this, and then they would go, no, that's of the devil. And I'm like, oh. it literally said that's of God, right? So over and over again, I would realize that, that religion has, has really taken over in, in, in God's church, right? So he pulled me out of that a long time ago, got me out of Christian college and said, I want to raise you myself. I want, I want my dream. I want to raise you, just me, no one else. I want to pull you away, tuck you away. I don't want anybody else feeding into you right now. I want to raise you. Will you give me that? And in that, I had to walk in great faith. And I had to believe that, A, I'm hearing him. B, that's his dream. You know, that's what he said all along. C, it's going to take me full circle and raise me up to be full full grown with him, like a full mature relationship with him, right? And functioning like I'm. So I said, yes, that takes a lot of faith. That takes a lot of trust in him. But it's also both of our dreams. I mean, if, if you want to wake up every day and be able to hear from the Lord, wouldn't that be amazing? It's a dream come true for you, right? So that's a dream for me being fulfilled, right? If you want to wake up and be able to see in the spirit realm and, and you can, wouldn't that be a dream come true for you? It's also a dream come true for him, for his kids to hear him and see him and move with him, right? It's, it's, it's essentially a requirement if you're going to want to walk in the spirit. It's about becoming mature in full on faith, no unbelief right? So that has to be squared away. And your relationship has to be on decent ground to do this, right? Meaning that you're not in fear. You can't move in the spirit if you're in fear. I mean, you can't go deal with the demonic if you're in fear and all that. So you have to be in the right mind. You have to be in the mind of Christ. You have to be in the right state of mind of your own being. And you have to know him and be solid with who he is and his identity and solid with who you are and your identity found in him. Because some of those things are are warfare things that I move in in the spirit. Some of the things I move in in the spirit is moving from this location where I'm in Michigan in the spirit to another location around the world to deal with something with him. First of all, you have to believe. Second of all, you have to be you have to be in tune with your spirit man, which means you know that your your spirit man, he or she, right? There, there's no sex, but for, for the sake of your gender in this world, you have to be aware of who he or she is and that he or she is fully uh, invested with the Lord and on the other side all the time, learning, sitting at his feet and obeying him. And that your spirit man is the real you. I mean, the the powerful source part of who you are. That's a requirement to move in the spirit. You have to start having your soul be in communion with your spirit man. I don't mean literally talking, although my spirit man will come through and really give me a what for sometimes into my conscious soul man, my conscious man that's living these 24 hour periods in this body, right? But I'm not talking about having a full-on conversation. What I'm talking about is that you you have your soul com- completely relinquish all of it of the leadership of you to your spirit, because your spirit is with God. God is supreme. God is the wise one. God has the answers. God is everywhere, knows all things, and is all powerful. And your spirit man is hooked up to Him. 
So my soul man, I, I basically set her straight a while ago and said, listen, you can think what you want to think and you can move how you want to want to move. But I'll tell you what, it's never you're never going to do well doing that. You're going to hurt. You're going to be in pain. You're going to fail. You're going to be you're going to feel negative things. That's what happens when you be a self God. So we're I'm, I'm telling you right now, you're bowing to our spirit. And so I took authority over my soul man. So if you haven't done that, I would encourage you to do that. Because my spirit man is under the authority of Jesus Christ. Everything has been put in his hand and I'm coming through him and he's my high priest and that's who I sit before all the time in the spirit. So that's number one to move in the spirit. You have to move with your real person, not your soul man. Your soul man has to come on board. Now, my my friend had asked me, um, do you practice this so that you can... You know, because they were essentially saying I was practicing seeing in the spirit, but I was only getting like so many things proper and the rest of the things were inaccurate, right? And I said, well, that's what happens when the soul gets involved. And I said, it will be hit and miss at first. It's like riding a bike or running a marathon that you have to train for, or you're riding a horse show jumping and you've never done it before. If you just jump on your horse and you've never done it before and you go to, I bet there might be something you do right, but probably most of it you won't do well right? Because you have to walk in these things. Work out your salvation is exercise. Exercise what you've been given. Exercise who you are, essentially, right? So, of course, we have to do that. But I said, what I do in the spirit, I don't leave it up to chance. To the best of my ability, here's what I mean. Your soul man here always wants to run the show, okay? Or be involved or be at the head. And that person has to take a back seat. Which means that I literally, I'm a seer, so I can see, meaning I I work with him in my imaging room a lot, I'm constantly training it. I began with that, and he would say, let's do a fun exercise. This is just an exercise of faith. You're not going to be able to prove any of it, but I want you to work with me on this because it'll help develop things, right? I have to even believe that by faith, right? That I'm hearing him properly. So you have to be a believer and you have to be fearless and you have to take a risk. He said, if people won't move out and take take a risk, which is a chance on me, how can I, you won't even move. How can I work with you? You're afraid to move. You're afraid to make a mistake. So I'm not. <laughs> I'm just happen to be a person who's like, no, I can do that. You know, like if you're a person in life where you're like, oh, I can do that, or I think I can do that, or I can, right? Like, My soul man can be real strong with that because I can do a lot of things because I actually believe that I can. So, but she has to take a back seat, but I have the confidence in God that he made me to be successful like he is, right? So I I have to sit there with the Lord and say to myself, we're only going to be like Yeshua because I'm going to be mature and he's a son, right? He's a son of God, the capital S O N. So I'm, but I'm a son in him and I'm going to do as he says, because he, he, he has it the right way. And he's exemplifying that to us. So I'll, I will come under what God shows me only what the father shows me. So he would have me practice this exercise where he says, close your eyes. And if you had earplugs in and you couldn't hear someone come in the room and your eyes are closed, right? You're like what you guys call resting your eyes, right? Sometimes you can tell someone came in the room, even though you never heard anything. And you'll open your eyes and someone will be standing in your threshold or your doorway or something smiling at you, right? He said, like that, close your eyes. Where am I in the room? And for that, you have to settle your physical person can't be involved. Like meaning like your soul has to take a back burner. You have to start looking through your spirit man's eyes and you have to, you have to feel the room, right? You feel the room for where is a person standing in here? If I can't use my eyes, how can I, it's like, it's like a blind person, right? Would identify through sound or something, or a deaf person would identify through sight. Your spirit man can identify by feeling, by sight, by smell, by touch, by taste. You see what I'm saying? So it's exercise your senses in the spirit realm. So for a while, I would say, well, I feel like out of anywhere in this room, feeling wise, I feel like there's an energy source over there, like of somebody standing, like a person's energy coming off of them standing over there. And then he would get excited and he would go, yay, you know, like that's good. And we do that for a really long time. Can you prove it? No, but it's an exercise of faith with him. It's having fun with your father. Do you know how much he really wants to do that with us? He does a lot. So then it would move into, and then it would move into, he would say, he would get a little trickier. (laughs) He would say, now where am I? And I'd go, ah, because I would technically sense two different directions in the room like over here or over there. And he goes, good. Yes, there is someone else in the room with us. There's an angel here, but I want you to determine which one's me. 
So that's when I had to dial it in more. Okay. And, and, and it, he didn't tell me how to do that. I had to sit here and go, okay, what would be the difference between an angel and angel or the Lord's presence? I would go, well, he would be stronger presence of holiness and everything about him because he's God, the uncreated, right? So then I would go towards which one was the heavier, you know, uh, light and presence. And so this was just fun exercises that I would do. However, it did help me because it worked my mind, the mind of Christ. It worked my spirit man and senses getting in alignment with my soul man to learn to come into maturity. And I was looking to the Lord. You see, he had me say, where am I? It's looking to the Lord. So once I was able to start doing that with him, then I could start to distinguish different things. Like I may not have been able to see uh, extremely well the angel in the room, but I'd be watching like something with my parents, a video or whatever. And all of a sudden I would know that there's an angel standing over there. And this angel has a pen and paper in his hands. Like, what is he doing, God? He's like, very good. He d he's a scribing angel. He's recording everything, right? So again, it started from, small beginnings, don't despise them, you know? And so we would practice that. And then that would lead into a one time when he's like, I want you to work with this coma patient. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. He goes, I didn't ask you how to, how to do it. I said, do it. And so I realized that he had gotten me to, he had gotten me to where a, he believed in him and him and I like doing things together, like believed in us like as a successful union, but also he, he expected that I had been matured enough to be able to use the mind of Christ, right? Because I told you I had to use and practice my senses and also being under him and practice my imaging and all that. When I said yes to that and I said, okay, well, because he made me reason for myself, you know, inside using, using his mind. And I said, well, I guess I better call out to this person, right? Because they're wherever, right? So um, he moved with me and then all of a sudden it opened up to where I heard it almost like it was someone in the room and they were crying and they were in darkness. And I see all this start to play out before me. This is what I'm talking about. He's always there. When I move in the spirit, I am always looking to him for guidance. It's what Yeshua did. He always did what the father showed him. So in the spirit realm, when I go to walk in the spirit, if it's go to someone's house and see what the demonic is doing there or check out their environment, see what's going on. I had to begin in small beginnings with where am I in the room? And then what is this angel got going on with, with, with himself? What are you seeing? Right. Cause so you had to start picturing things so that when I could move with him, he would literally, I would say, okay, well, I'm not going anywhere without you. So I would see his hand extend to me in the spirit. I'd take his hand. And within one second we were there. I mean, it was like no time. And then I'm in this house that begins to, you know, um, draw up in the imaging room, like a, like a black and white sketch. And it's not in full detail, but it would be like, you're in a bedroom, you're in the daughter's bedroom, there's a vanity over there, there's there's cluttery, like, knick-knacky stuff all over the top of the desk, it's a twin size bed. You see what I'm saying? Like, I had to start practicing that at home, having fun games with God first, it, getting the bearings cl clicked in, you know, the gears clicked in, uh, in my spirit man, for my spirit man to lead my soul man, and my soul man had to relinquish all its own reasonings. It wasn't allowed to doubt. It, it couldn't do any of that. No unbelief, no nothing. We're going full force and you're going to listen to what your spirit man is showing you by faith, right? So he would show me, I would look to him and I'd say, show me. So when he wanted me to check out an environment, I literally would see him go before me and prepare the way. He would lead me. His spirit would go before me. I would watch him walking, you know, even if it's hazy and you can't see every detail of him, I'd watch him walk before me and then I would see what I would see. Meaning like if I saw, sometimes I saw pea soup darkness and I'd be like, wow, I don't remember seeing that before. I've seen dark entities, like I've seen their, their cloudy darkness, you know, like in a figure, you know, and I, but this is like, this is like a gray, thick air in there, like a cloud of air. And he'd be like, yeah, that's contention. Okay, so everything that I was doing with him, learning, I'm sitting at his feet, he's walking me around, right? He's raising his kid. I'm listening to him and watching him. That's it. That's what I mean by I, I don't like to leave room for error for my soul man to be involved. My soul man is like, take a back seat. You're going to record this in your conscious memory, but that's it. You don't run this. I've watched my soul man get too invested before and he didn't show me something and he didn't say it and I took liberty and then I got it wrong in the spirit. 
because my soul man piped up and had some kind of emotional investment. Well, I want to see this and I be- and I'm think I'm believing for the you know like but we can't. We have to do what he shows and tells us. So I literally will look to him if he if we go and we move in the spirit and he wants to do a healing. Folks, he said believers lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say a physical hand. And and I'll tell you this, he told me this, if you're going to lay a physical hand on using your body in this realm, it better be your spirit power source, the real you behind it that's moving anyway. And you better be in obedience to me because that's the only way it's going to come in. It's not just your physical hand doing it or your soul, period. So I said, well, I read between the lines in scripture and you didn't tell me that I have to have a physical hand. He goes, very good. So we move in the spirit. That's why I don't need to be someplace to do that with people as he leads. This is what you see. It says, this is all as he leads. I have to watch him do something. I watch him and he walks over to someone. And if he lays, I say, show me. And if he lays his left hand on their forehead, then I go over there and I lay my left hand on, on, on the forehead too. I do what my father is showing me to do. I partner with him. If he prays, then I ask him, do you want me to pray like I didn't hear exactly what you said? Or do you, or if I do, do you want me to repeat it? Sometimes he'd say yes. Sometimes he would say, no, I'm praying uh, my own prayer, but I want you to join in prayer uh, with this person for their healing from your heart, right? And so it's really listening to him and watching him. But that has to begin somewhere. I can't go and cast demons out of a house if I can't see and I can't hear right? So he's training us in our senses, but those are gifts of his spirit, meaning those are gifts of what he walks in. He does it really well. So if we want to practice any of that, we need to go to him and have him show us and tell us. But I'll tell you what, that's going to be real difficult for anybody to do if you haven't even believed the superficial level of scripture yet. If you're still in doubt, if you're still in doubt about who he is, who you are, if the scripture is accurate, if he's real, you're not going to be able to do any any of that because you're an unbeliever. And at at best, you're lukewarm, meaning that you you have an intellectual belief belief of all of that, but it hasn't penetrated your heart yet. And you're still battling with lies and deception, meaning like unbelief and doubt and fear and all that. You're not going to be able to walk in that stuff at all until you become a true believer in his identity, in that he is all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere, and you're made in his image. And so whatever he does, you can do. My my thing is, is that I want to be under him at all times. I want to be reverent. I want his authority to come back. We, we, we stole his authority in the garden, and we started walking on our own. I don't want my own authority. I don't want my own vision. I don't want my own movements and my own will. I want his, I want to give him back what we stole from him. That's the only gift we can give him back is to believe the truth. So if you're an unbeliever, that's the one thing that you can do of your own will that will essentially deny the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. If we're going to deny him, that's why it's the one unpardonable sin. It's the one thing you can't come back from is unbelief. So I want to give him my belief and I want to believe in the truth of of who he is. And as I do that, I want to give him back his authority that I stole in the garden, meaning humanity. So I want to give him back the ability to lead me. And and that comes under, I know I'm not everything. I know I don't know everything. I know I'm a baby compared to him. And I don't want to make mistakes when it has to do with other people's lives. And I don't want confusion where it comes into our relationship. I don't want confusion about who he is. I don't want confusion about who I am or what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do. So that's going to come into being a true believer that he's real. Number one, first of all, you have to believe that I am scripture says, then everything else is laid on the truth. So you have to believe he's real. Number one, you have to solidify that and that he's for you, not against you. And then you have to believe the scripture in your own soul for real. And for me, it was telling my soul, if it's in the book, it's real. It's true. He's real. I had to, I had to, I had to solidify that first. Israel, 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 Israel. He is real. Is he Israel, right? Israel. He's real. And so I said, absolutely. You're real. You're, 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 you're more real than most people will ever believe. You're real. You're the realest thing there is. So I had to solidify that. And then I had to solidify that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the word of God. So everything in that word was true. 
I had to dig, dig into it and find out why and how. That was my, my job of being one who is studying to show themselves approved, right? Approved of what? Getting to know God. Really, if you, if, it, if you understand that it says study to show yourself approved, it's not an intellectual knowledge of where the verses are and what they are. It's study to show yourself approved and knowing who God is. So that's why we read the Bible. That's why we connect to the Word of God. That's why we honor the Word of God written or spoken, because He's a person. And so you have to be a believer in all of that first. I mean, resolutely, right? That's the basic that you can't even walk in the spirit with him if you won't unite with the truth, which is the spirit. He is the spirit of truth. So you have to unite with the truth wholeheartedly as you do. And you open up and you become fearless and resolute that that it's the truth. The scripture is the truth. What, what he is, is absolutely real and true. And I'm going to bow to him and I'm going to, and I'm going to, I am going to subdue and take dominion. Like you told you, subdue and take dominion in the earth. Do we think that just means like speak and control animals and fish and weather? Oh, good night. Subdue and take dominion in your flesh. Tell your soul what it's going to do. It's not going to follow the ways of the flesh. It's not going to follow opposition to God. It's not going to follow deception. It will not be a, a, a soul, a consciousness in every 24 hour period that's going to sit in a place of fear and doubt and unbelief and pride. Absolutely not. You subdue and take dominion in your flesh. You have all the power with the with God. But what are you willing? Are you willing to lay, lay down that life? right? Are you willing to die? Are you willing to come through the cross? Because it's that life you have to lay down. Self-reasoning, self, self-leadership, self self-will, um, what you want to swim in, unbelief and all. No, 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 no. You, you can't even do, you cannot walk in the spirit if you're going to walk in the opposite spirits. Darkness. All that stuff is darkness. You have to walk in the truth. So fundamentally, this stuff it will open up to you as you begin to yoke with the truth for real and cast down these things and, t- and take care of your reasonable service, which is to deal with that unrepentant and unrelinquished soul. Relinquish it. Lay it down. Put it through the cross. Come through the death of all that. Give it up. Come back to the garden and give him back what you stole. You stole belief in him, trust in him, belief in the truth, and you stole the authority from him leading your own life. Okay, that was Adam and Eve, right? But we come through all of them. So you have to go back and you have to give him back belief in the truth, belief in who he is, belief in who you are in him, belief in how he really made you when he pulled you right smack out of him and held you in his hand before he ever put you anywhere. And you are perfect in all your ways, just like he is. You have to go back to that. And then you have to say, I need to give you back your authority in my life, your dominion in my life, your leadership to be a father of me, to raise me up properly and to show me the way. Does he not want to do that? He wants to. He wants to prepare the way for you. So I, I put it back on him and I tell him things like, I'm not going to be able to uh, see anything properly or hear anything or do anything properly or minister with you properly if I'm not under you. So I want to make sure that I'm under you like Yeshua, which was he never moved unless the father showed him. That's it. So you got to tell me or show me. Otherwise, I'm not moving. And it's not an, it's not a fear of or an inability to move. It is, I am unwilling to move myself. I am unwilling to do these things led of my own person. And I'm going to follow you in the spirit. And I quite literally do that. So I became a believer and I became a resolute believer and I became a resolute reverent believer in God, putting, laying my life down and, and laying that whole soul option down. My whole soul is laid down and poured out unto my spirit man who is poured out unto Christ. So that his whole soul, his whole mind, his whole will, his his emotions, his leadership and all that he is can come through and be the only will that I have or the only soul that I have. We are like same as, right? At least in the fundamentals of the blueprint of it. I'll still have my characteristics, but let's be real. If he made me, they're his. They're portions of him. Everything that we are is portions of him in a unique compilation that is called you. But every gift is his. Everything that we could ever practice is his. Don't practice them without him or you fall into the category, uh, you know, practice. Don't practice them without seeing him lead you in them and raise you up in them. Or you fall into the category of you being your own self God again, the whole new age type thing without being led by the truth and his spirit, right? in authority as he's the authority figure over and you are a servant to his authority. You serve his interests right? That was key for me. So can I go and lay hands on even if I'm in this room anywhere in the world? Absolutely. I take his hand and we go together and I say, show me the way. 
and he'll quite literally walk it out. But all of that, going in and casting demons out, checking out someone's environment, clearing the environment, all that stuff, I looked at him and go, show me, show me. And so all of that had to come with believing that what I see inside m this mind that he's given me, the mind of Christ on me, what I see in there is accurate. And that all began rolling it all the way back to let's do an exercise of where I am in the room. Do you see how these small beginnings build? And so when, when, when it was asked to me, do you practice the gifts the gifts of this, the gifts that you've been given of the spirit. I said, yes, but really, I don't call it that. I call it getting mature and growing up into the full stature of Christ. If I want to walk as he walks, then I got to grow up. It's time to grow up. He keeps keep saying that. It's like this echoing thing. It's time for everyone to grow up now. But the thing for me is I don't even want to call it my gifts because that's ownership. Anything that I am came from him. Anything that I walk in, was his originally. He's only sharing it with me. Okay. He loves that. He loves that we're like him and made in his image. But I, I understand the origin of, of my origins, anything. And like the fivefold, Yeshua is everything. He's apostle. He's prophet. He's Messiah. He's son of God. He has everything been placed in his hands. So why shouldn't you be able to touch anything he wants you to touch or walk in at any point? I don't, I don't believe in, I don't believe in just, I, I, am I ordained an apostle? Yes. But I was also in that ordination and that's in the earth by man. But in that ordination, I was ordained prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, apostle. But there's so much more to that. See, that's limiting. I saw absolutely not. <laughs> he showed me that I'm a Swiss army knife, which means there's way more than than one thing that you can do, which tells me in sonship, there's so much more you can scribe, you can be a musician, you know, you, you, you can do anything that God wants you to walk in at any point. Because he holds it all, because he is it all. So when I say in Christ, you have been given the entire kingdom, I mean it. So when I move in the spirit with him in those ways, I'm looking with what he has given all of us is spiritual vision. It's just that I've been practicing these things and practicing my spiritual hearing. If you can think of any kind of senses that we have in our physical world that, you know, smell, touch, sound, right? If... Go walk and practice that in the spirit with him. If you truly believe in him and you're truly anchored in the truth, the, the scripture, that it's real, it's true, and you believe it inside of yourself, right? You believe in him. Ask him to show you the way. Ask, ask him to practice these things with you, and he's going to want you to exercise that mind. He does not, he's not going to puppet you, like pull you all your strings. If you say, please show me, he will. He'll demonstrate for sure. That's called mentoring you or parenting you or raising you. But he's going to want you to use your mind. That's why when he said, I'm telling you to go, go, go retrieve that person's spirit right now. And they're in a coma. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. He goes, I didn't ask you if you knew how to do it. I said, do it. That's part of being mature, which is now you sit and you reason. If you have to go reach a spirit, how are you going to do it? Well, there could, it could have been, he's, he's telling me now, it could have been many different avenues. You could have said, take my hand and lead me to their spirit. And he could have done that right? Or, or like I said, I exercised the, the, the free thinking of them through the mind of Christ, swimming through him, like almost pulling options. And I said, well, I can call out because in the spirit, there's no time or distance. And they should be able to hear me if I'm addressing that specific person, dialing them in. And sure enough, I heard that person scream and cry out and be in fear and darkness. And I saw all of that flood me as soon as I took a first step. If we don't take a step, he can't do anything with us. It has to be by faith. You can't even please him without that. So these are some of the areas of, do I practice the gifts of the spirit? Yes, they're him. They're him. It's practicing walking in him and with him. And if you're going to want him to lead you, meaning demonstrate, then you have to be able to see and hear him. And that comes at practice. My hearing came at first through what I call like 
caveman style communication. It's like, I believe you. You said it. You said it in the scripture. And I told you I'm resolute about this face value. If you said your sheep all know you and hear you and another voice they will not follow and you call them by name, that's true. So here, here I am, here you are, and I believe I can hear you. It's just that maybe I need to tune it in better. So let's practice first with thumbs up and thumbs down in my imaging room, in my imagination. And that's how we did a lot. Of, I'd ask him questions. If you want to talk to God and you want to hear from him, uh, open up your imaging room to him. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You may not actually see a thumb. You just may know in your knower that you got a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then I went, okay, well, you know that feeling we can get across our chest for, for yeses or for peace, and it's really really light and airy and it feels amazing. Or if it's wrong and it's heavy or it's evil or something like that, bad, that you'll feel heaviness in your chest. I go, can we incorporate that? And he'd be like, yeah. You know, like essentially that's what we would do. I, I would ask a question and I'd sit quietly, really peacefully ex expecting to receive of him. And then I would get either a knowing of thumbs up, thumbs down and a release or a non-release and a heaviness across my chest for yeses and nos. Folks, we have angels who are like, I can easily do that with them. I can help them in this way, Lord. Yes, send me, right? And so you have, but you have to believe. Again, it comes back to, are you a believer? Are you a believer or are you a doubter of his goodness and his power and his desire to connect with you and the ability that you are given by just being made in his image? Are you a believer? It's really coming down to that over and over again. So no, so you have to be, you have to be, somebody who actually is fundamentally a child of God to begin with, not just an infant who knows about him, but a child, meaning you're, you're at some level of, of growing up in him into the truth and believing it to establish that fundamental foundation, start to begin these exercises with him. Right. And then it went from me being thumbs up, thumbs down and releases across my chest or no release across my chest to actually having a concept in a full sentence come into my mind. And I'd be like, wow, that sounds like a really smart me. And he's like, that's me. What voice do you think I'm going to use other than your own if it's the only one you've ever heard inside of yourself? So <laughs> then I would call her Smart Janet, which I knew was the Lord after a while. And then after the years of doing this, right? Months and months and months or years, like as in one or two years, it began. Then I, I, I could hear his own voice developed his own voice inside of me because my faith had grown that much. My practice of it had grown that much. My hearing him in full on sentences inside my mind. Okay, this is not outside, but all in there, a conversation where I literally would stop. I'd ask him a question. I'd stop and I'd give him the floor inside. Okay, you have the floor. So whatever he would bring up would next would next be his answer. Did I get it right all the time? No. Was my soul involved? Was doubt and fear and all that involved in, in the beginning? Yes. And then I get frustrated and then I back away thinking, I uh, oh, this isn't real. And, you know, I had to fight through all of that. And you're all going to have to do that to you. That's part of growing up. It's time to grow up. But I'll tell you, relaxing and being in peace will help you. Trusting him will help you a lot. And so all of this is a level of, of practice. You have to, we, in order for us to become one with his spirit, we have to start becoming our spirit man again, not your soul man. Your soul man in this world ha, ha, has, has the function to connect to your body. Okay, great. Uh, but that person ought not lead us in any of our ways because it, it, it is so tightly tied to carnal nature. So that man has to be subdued. That man has to take a back seat to your spirit man. Your spirit man was renewed when you accepted Christ. Your spirit man is the one that spends all day with him. Every day. Sits at his feet. Okay. So we have to be honoring him and sitting at his feet, number one, in our spirit man. So we have to connect to our spirit man again, which is that you are hearing from God. You're sitting with him. That's the real you. If you can't believe that, it's going to be real difficult for you in your soul, in your conscious 24-hour man that lives in this body for you to become in alignment with the Lord and receive anything of him because you're double-minded. You're soul minded, you're in doubt, you're not believing in your spirit, man. Your spirit man is like, yo, you're, you know, you got it. We have to settle this. One of us is going to rule this roost. It's either going to be your unrepentant soul or it's going to be a repentant soul under submission because that's the one thing that soul wanted in the beginning. We, we rebelled against God and we wanted to do our own thing. So that's going to be number one. Your soul's going to have to take a back seat and it's going to have to relinquish all power, all reasoning everything to your spirit man who is in submission to God because it's a Holy Spirit. Now it's been revived, renewed, and quickened. Okay. That's all a requirement to move in any of these ways. 
And so I was, I was expressing all of that this morning in a private message. And he said, I think that this would be very helpful for the others. I all, it was also brought up to me today, um, by uh, a brother named Peter that um, are, he said, are you are you under like is like witchcraft right now and attacks from the enemy with what? And it's not that I it's not that I'm saying no to that. Um, yes, but maybe not today. But uh, a few days back, um, we had to really wore that out. But I said, what I'm finding is is staying in staying in the light like quite literally, uh, in his presence, mean, meaning quite literally in his presence is really beneficial because the witchcraft can't even touch you when you're literally in his presence, not just the anointing with you and you're in communion with him. But I mean, like in worship, it's really, really difficult for them to, to, cause it's, cause witchcraft, any witch, I don't care if they're translocating and, and, and they're in your room with you. I don't care. It's still a work of the flesh. It's through fallen entities, right? But it's a work of the flesh. And a work of the flesh is squashed easily easily by Yeshua HaMashiach, by the powers that be from the High and Holy One who is over all. And He's the light. And anywhere where the light is, the darkness has to go. So His whole point is when you're in worship to me, they can't come near you at all. Their witchcraft cannot. They can't even penetrate. So it really comes down to... You know, like we have to be in a place of worship a lot. And he said, that's a problem in my body right now is that many don't come to me in worship. They come to me in communion. They come to me in prayer. They come to me in requests and petitions. And they spend some time with me singing some songs or something, but they're not in worship. Worship to him is when you sit in his presence and you adore him. And that's your only agenda is to lavish him because that's what he wants to do with you. So I'm, why am I bringing this up? Because last night, which he's asked me, and if you can hear the music in the background a little bit, I'll turn it up eventually when I get ready to play something because he's going to want me to play for you. Now, listen, I'm not a professional singer and I've never had any training. Okay. I have always been a nasally, um, you know, flat kind of singer and he's been working with me for years and years and years. And so I don't judge it in, don't, don't, don't judge it in like technique for sure. Okay. But it's the spirit that will move. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I'm going to share something with you that I only shared with a couple of people privately. However, what happened last night and due to this question about witchcraft, last night I shared this and people were having visions, meaning in their mind, they would close their eyes and they could see things. Okay. Whatever he was showing them. Some had visuals of, of rainbows or some had visuals of um, angels singing or angels reverently uh, singing with us at the same time as the Lord and I were singing and we were singing in tongues. Again, not everybody believes in that or practices that. Not my issue with you today. What I am saying is I was praying in the spirit. You can pray in the spirit in tongues and you can pray in the spirit in English, which means the spirit and you are praying at the same time, his spirit and your spirit. Okay. For me, I have to sing. It's not a matter of, am I good or not? It's, I have to, like, I have to breathe. It's a part of God that he put in me that I have to do. And I'm constantly asking him to help me for years. And as much as I have to do that, I have to pray in tongues. It's again, another part of me that got reconciled when I came out of religion. And I said, if it's in the scripture, and I'm not talking about public tongues, I'm talking about the part in the scripture that says that we have a private prayer language with God that is just between us and God. That's in the scripture. Okay. And that can be whatever it is with you and God. I don't know how you move with God. I can pray with no words. Him and I just sit between each other and we open up our hearts to one another. And there is stuff that takes place that has no words and it's incredible. Okay. So one of the ways though, is I'm very verbal, as you can see, and I like to be able to express myself from my depths of who I am. And sometimes I don't have English words for that. That's where I pray with him by the spirit in tongues. Having said that, he said, I'm going to release peace to the people that hear this. So I started getting these responses from the people that I sent it to who are like, man, it's filled with peace and I don't get peace very much. And I was like, okay, bingo, there's a check mark, you know, of what he had said to me. Now, when I was doing this, I saw where I was in the spirit realm, which I'll t which I will explain after this. But people started having these visuals, like 
one person was 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 saying that I I see you in the throne room and I see you in a white dress and you're sitting on the floor sort of cross legged like uh, Indian style on the floor. And you're before him, but you're not near the throne, but you're in the throne room, but you're not near the throne. It's like you're 15 or 20 feet away from the throne and you're, and you're, but, but you're now, now you're going from cross-legged to being on your knees, like your mural. You have that mural where that girl is on her knees with her hands up. I saw you doing that. And then I saw you go, go bowed all the way down to the floor with your hands on the floor and you had a crown on your head and you were worshiping him. Okay. What they, what, what they don't know is that he, when, when we were doing this, I was in the throne room. I wasn't near the throne. It was like being in the middle of a ballroom dance floor, sitting in the middle of the floor. So what she said was accurate. And she said I was wearing a white dress. I couldn't see a white dress because the light between the Lord and I was so bright. He was so white and I was so white that I couldn't make out what the shape of our clothing was, just that it was him and I. I could see the shape of our person, sort of, but it even morphed into almost like a, like a, just the glow of a star. What I saw, though, was a direct beam coming from my chest to his chest back and forth. And as I say it, I can still feel it. I could feel that happening while I was moving in the spirit. And I said, what you don't know is that oftentimes I will sit either Indian style cross-legged before him on the floor or on his lap, or I'll be on my knees before him with my hands raised, and then I have to go prostrate or down low with my head all the way to my face to the floor with my hands on the floor and say, please let me do this. I have to do this. It's like a position that I have to do before him when I'm overcome with what I'm overcome in my emotions and my, and my reverence and my regard to him, my appreciation. She couldn't have known any of that unless my father revealed it. You did not learn this from flesh and blood. My father revealed this to you, Peter, right? It was the same thing. And then I heard from one of the gentlemen that I shared it with, and they wouldn't know this either unless the spirit had told them. He said, this is what he said, thank you for the Jewish prayer. <laughs> and I giggled. He said, or unless you were just praying in tongues. And I said, yes, I was praying in tongues. But what you don't understand is he has moved my prayer tongue. He's training my tongue to be able to say the syllables of certain languages so that like the first Pentecost when they prayed and the people heard it in their language, he's training my tongue for different languages so that when we move about the world, I will be able to speak whatever he needs to speak through me because I'll already be trained in my tongue. It'll be him doing it, right? He'll come over me and do it. But just like how when I pray and sing in tongues, but it'll be him doing it. And I said, some of these words I can hear, you'll hear me say Yeshua. Is it Yahshua or Yehoshua? No, it comes out Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. But it, that, it is a Hebrew word. And the Lord is training me in some of those. I've heard Adonai, Adonai, Adonai sometimes. Eli, Eli, Eli. That's, that's ancient Arabic for my God, my God, my God. So he wouldn't have known that unless the Lord had told him that. And the Lord said, I'm going to sing a prayer. We're going to sing a prayer for them tonight. And he said, yeah. He goes, you say you were praying in tongues, but he said, I have heard tongues my whole life. I'm very well versed in hearing tongues. That sounded like a Jewish prayer. And not only did it sound like a Jewish prayer song, but it sounded like there you were singing to a group of people. And then again, they wouldn't know this. The one lady had heard angels singing in with me, spirit being singing in with me saw that and heard that and another person said that there were people that were that were like listening and I said again you wouldn't know this unless my father would have shared that with you but in the throne room it's like we're in our own world in the middle of this floor and no one's really around us in the immediate vicinity but on the outskirts all these people all these spirits of the cloud of witnesses were listening I say all that to you because my hope is that even if it's not a spectacular rendition of singing for you, that the same anointing and purpose that he set forth to share privately will come through for you. His intent is to bring peace. His intent is to bring the light. It was light that I saw. We were, we were just emanating light, which can cast out any darkness around. 
has the ability and I, and I, and I, and he's leading me to share this which means that I don't do what he doesn't tell me or show me to do right so he has an agenda with this so you may receive visuals if you relax at the end of this which which I'm about to play it I'll pray and then I will I will play that and when it's over I will be done with the recording you may get visuals. You may be able to practice. What does he want to show you in your imaging? What there were words of just knowing, words of knowledge. It was like I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew that you're singing a prayer, like a Hebrew prayer, right? I don't know. You might hear some of those words, some of them not. He's just training my voice, right? But he has the Lord has an agenda with this, and I'm praying that the anointing go with, as he said, because this is his by his leading. So I believe that it will. I'm praying that you have peace come over you. I'm praying that whatever issues that you're going through, that you'll be able to listen to this and hear him, because it was not just me singing. He's using my body, and him and I had a connection from the, my chest to his chest, and white light was filling so bright that I could barely see the two of us. Whatever you have going on in your life, I pray that it brings you a visual, a connection, a, a closeness with him, light, peace, love, whatever it is that he wants to do with you. I pray that this will come to you in his whole agenda of, of what he wants to do with this. And if you'll give me just a moment, I'll pull that up. I'm going to have to turn this up louder and get closer to this. Give me just a moment here. I'm going to try to find it where I have this. Okay, on mine. Ona <laughs> Usaria Pavoria Nebunia Shotari Usaria Taria Kuria Nayataria Vishwara Usaria Vishinia Nanamia Miaturia Usaria Tabrika Mayeshwara Ularia Turia Kinanu Usaria <laughs> Sadiya <laughs> 
That is the prayer that he sang with me, through me, last night. And I pray that it blesses you. And Father, I pray that we all join you and learn how to walk in the Spirit with you and become mature ones with you, bowing to you, reuniting to you as the leader of us, watching you in our imaging room, listening to you in our mind, to be able to hear in the mind as you speak and you lead us in all your ways. May we couple with you more and more. May we be returned to our true image. May we be returned to being true spirit beings made in the image of our Father and walking therewith. And I love you very much.